segment of uh, Big Bang Theory uh, Theory's BTS vlog. Yeah, Big Bang Theory or else BTS vlog. It is uh, just uh, 22 minutes into the day of uh, Tuesday, August 30th, uh, 2016. And while I'm maintaining the vlog, I'm just continuing to vlog, my editing is falling further and further behind. Uh, anyways, I'm going to try to, uh, to fix that up, to rectify that tonight. Uh, try to get some, uh, some of the work into the editing, uh, into the editing bay properly done. Uh, tonight, so we hopefully get one, uh, episode out tomorrow. Uh, but we'll kind of have to sort of see about that and sort of try to clear that backlog up. But again, you're not going to see this until after the backlog is more or less clear, because this is coming in behind everything, so... Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, I'm, I've got some good uh, observation points uh, on the system from the from the satellites. Uh, I am matching up what I'm seeing uh, here with the, what I see on the satellite. I'm beginning to do, get, get a better feel for it. Uh, I don't think that there's going to be any way to predict things because some of the things that that pop up, there 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 are a lot of things because like, they, they they literally pop out out of nowhere. Uh, you're looking at it, maybe within uh, one or two hours, you're looking at these, these clips, it, there's nothing there before, and then the next time you go, there's something there, and, it, and it literally it just pops out of nowhere. So you have your regular tracks that you can see. You can see where a hurricane is going. You can see where a lot of these these uh, sort of uh, storms that are up at the, uh, at, at, in the Arctic, storms that are at the, at the equator, you can see that you can, you can see that sort of these things. You can also see the interaction between the equator and the north and the North Pole. Uh, but there there are other features, other parts of the atmosphere, uh, sort of mid latitude to midway between uh, the pole or the equator. Uh, that there are conditions that produce spontaneously uh, storm systems. And you can see it. You can see it, that are actually occurring. So, uh, where this is going next, uh, I'm definitely going to start working on uh, solar astrophysics, trying to connect uh, the uh, what I'm seeing in the atmosphere with uh, events on the sun. Uh, that is taking a deeper turn. I'm getting more into that. So, uh, but there's a long way to go. There's a lot of information to sift through. There's a lot of different options to go through. So. Uh, I'm going to take it bit by bit, allow the research to take me in, a certain, in the direction that it wants me to go in, so uh, that's how I approach things. Anyways, uh, I'm going to leave this here for now, uh, leave it short, and uh, yeah, see you later. Well, hello everybody, welcome back to the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory L's BTS vlog. Yeah, it is 23 hours and 13 minutes into the day of Tuesday, August 30th. 2016, and I'm starting to catch up on, on editing the vlogs, I and mean, that was one of the big problems is, you know, once you film all this stuff and you get the clips off the camera, then you have to edit everything, and that's where the problem is coming in, and then uh, I currently wasn't up to schedule on my editing bay, and, but things are getting there, things are slowly improving, and I think that's the whole name of the game is that, as I said before, it's like middle school, you mid-August, you're kind of fiddling, getting things together, even in August, you're, you know, into the last month, last few days of August, you're kind of fiddling around, you're trying to get used to the schedule, and things are kind of falling off, but as you get into September, 
you get back into a routine, things become normal, you adjust to uh, uh, the various things that are going on, and, you know, it, it, it becomes the, uh, your schedule, your school schedule. And so there's always learning that's learning to be done, there's always uh, uh, work that has to be done in terms of uh, 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 fixing up your notebooks, fixing up uh, your writing, taking your notes, uh, dealing with the ad hoc notes, so, you know, ad hoc notes are your, just your general loose notes, then you have to organize your loose notes into more of a organized uh, system, that's your, basically your notebook, uh, and then from your notebook you go further into basically uh, essays, uh, and the essays would be vlogs in this case, uh, and then from essays into full-on documentaries, which are ba basically your projects or your uh, uh, ter major term papers. So that's kind of uh, where things are standing right now, is uh, getting things organized, getting things done. Uh, I've got a very good uh, observational post right now for uh, uh, the atmospheric physics project. I've got about, uh, I think, uh, just about uh, 10 different perspectives uh, from various different uh, uh, satellite images uh, of the Earth, of the Earth's atmosphere, uh, so I can have a good idea of what's going on, how things interact. Um, so like tonight, uh, there's humidity coming in. I want to know where the humidity is coming, coming in from. And watching the weather, watching the weather, oh, there is a 50% chance of this, 50% chance of that. In other words, they have no idea where they're going, where they're go going uh, with the weather, because if they're only looking at the visible, and more, more often than not that's what they're doing, they're looking at the visible, and solely looking at the visible, even if they have the radar there, they, it's, not large, it's not a large enough picture to sort of figure out where this thing is coming from and where it's going. But if you get a hemisphere, a, a view of the hemisphere, and you can get this view of a hemisphere with the uh, with various different composite images. Uh, you get a better sense of okay, where is the storm coming from? Where's the, what's feeding it? What where's it going? Uh, sometimes the storms are are spontaneous. You want to sort of figure out uh, uh, what sort of fed the, uh, the initial the initial uh, driver of your, your your water vapor. Where did the water vapor come from? Uh, where is it going? Where's the track? Uh, these are the various different questions that come up as you're starting to do the work out here, and it changes with the season. So, uh, fall is one thing, summer is another thing, uh, winter is another thing, uh, spring is another uh, s set of conditions, and so you have to track throughout the year uh, what's going on, how it lines up. Uh, do you get uh, when you have a line of precipitation coming in or a, a lot of uh, water vapor coming in? Where do you get the snowfall? Where do you get the rainfall? Uh, is it hot? Is it cold? Uh, is there uh, moisture in the In other words, is it uh, humid out? Is it dry out? Uh, these are the various different things you start looking at. And I think the only way to do this is to come out and actually, actually feel it. Like tonight is, uh, as comparison to last night, last night was fairly dry, so the, I would say the humidity was low. Uh, it was cooler out, and when you looked at the satellite, what you saw is you saw an Arctic front, something coming down from the Arctic, dominating the area. Uh, now, if you look at the uh, uh, at the satellite, you look at the hemispherical image. What do you see? You see a storm coming up from uh, Mexico, and the Mexican uh, uh, line of uh, moisture, that's the water vapor, is being fed by um, uh, uh, storms, tropical storms in the Pacific and in the uh, Caribbean, in terms of the in terms of Gulf, the Gulf of Mexico. And these are the things that are feeding it. And so you can see where it is and where it lines up and how it lines up with uh, the rest of the hemisphere. And you can actually see where it's going. It's actually going over to, towards uh, Greenland. That's where a lot of these storms end up tracking, is towards Greenland. Now, Greenland, for some reason, and I'm assuming because of the military base there, it's all blacked out. So there is no information over Greenland. I don't get any satellite images over Greenland. Uh, it's an all blackout area because primarily, I think, the military say, no pictures here, please. Uh, so, uh, but you can get an idea of what's happening. So that's one of the, the things I have to do is see what type of weather is going on in Greenland, what type of uh, information they can get. If I can't get satellite information, is there a temperature information? Is there um, uh, other forms of confirmation that, that in terms of uh, what's going on with the atmospheric physics that I can sort of get a hold of? 
and this is where the search kind of takes me. In other words, it's a, it's a search for answers uh, to, to uh, questions that you don't necessarily have answers to, or or even you found that they're, they're not uh, properly answered, even by the, the, the sort of the uh, so-called uh, uh, meteorology experts. Uh, and meteorology is, is your weather people. That's basically atmospheric physics, and if they don't necessarily understand atmospheric, in other words, they haven't come from atmospheric physics, come from a physics background into meteorology, they're study, studying meteorology, weather itself, then they're not going to understand the dynamics, they're not going to understand the physics behind uh, what they're seeing, and this is where they're going to make, they're going to make a lot of their mistakes. It's in, the thing, the, it's in the things you don't know that affect how you see your, or what your perspective is of what you see in front of you. And this is where a lot of their descriptions, they fall a little short because they're working on models, they're working on uh, uh, predictions that they don't necessarily create themselves. They're allowing a machine to do this. And rather than looking out the window or sort of getting a feel for it, it's just sort of, they're, they're simply doing what they've t been taught in school. In other words, they're parroting, they're repeating things. Uh, almost like a robot. They've been programmed in school uh, to do X, Y, and Z, and when they get out into the work field, they're doing as they're programmed X, Y, and Z. <clears throat> and this is what we've got to talk about, the Minion Society, the, the, the training people not to think, but rather to view things the way they are told by an authority. And not, to, and not to deviate from this view of the authority. So, these are things that you guys are sort of think about when, as you're doing the research. So, that's the end of the research. For, this is the end of the, uh, uh, this section, section of the vlog. So, uh, I'm thinking I'll leave that here for now. Uh, and next segment, I'll come back and do a little bit more, more of a description because I've got to talk about the... Uh, uh, the, the events that are going on on the sun, we've got a couple of the, the solar astrophysics, and how the actions of the sun, the uh, the events going on 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 the sun, actually affect our atmosphere here, how the atmosphere, and how it deals with the atmospheric physics. So, uh, these are things we have to look up. These are things that we sort of have to go in and develop more, and we will be doing that as we uh, go along. So, see you in the next segment. Well, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory Al's BTS vlog. It is currently 23 hours and 28 minutes into the day of uh, Wednesday, August 31st, uh, 2016. And we're vlogging our usual spot because it's uh, time I'm out doing my observations. And uh, interesting night. Uh, I watched uh, a, a vortex come down from the Arctic. It's a, it's a, the system is essentially a vortex type of system. It's, uh, uh, it's rather large, uh, but it's, a, it's it's not like a hurricane. It, it, the hurricane is more of a condensed, uh, highly compacted vortex. This was a loose vortex that covers a significant area. So it came down to the Arctic, pushing the whole system, the uh, the heat coming from the Caribbean, from uh, Mexico, that line that's always coming up from there, uh, is pushing that down. So it was bringing a lot of cold weather into into uh, on, into my area here. So it's just about 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, there's a good wind. It actually started uh, cooling off earlier today. It, it, instead of going up to its usual 86, 90 degrees, it ended up... Uh, or basically peaking out at uh, 77 degrees, so uh, it, it, it's been a, a, a pretty good day, and, and I can, can more or less say, since we're getting these Arctic fronts, and these are coming down directly from the Arctic, it's coming uh, basically uh, above us is the Hudson's Bay, the Hudson's Bay is where you uh, get your Arctic from, it's, it's, the Arctic is sort of connected to there, and uh, it's coming straight down from there, so we are going to be getting uh, on a regular basis, uh, fronts from the Arctic. We're going to be getting systems from the Arctic, and that's going to bring a lot of cold air uh, into Ontario, into Toronto. So we're going to probably have a very cold we we uh, winter. Uh, if the moisture and precipitation remains the same the way it is now, uh, I don't know if we're going to have much snow, uh, because uh, while 
the most of the moisture density seems to be going around us rather than not coming towards us. Uh, now the west end of Toronto uh, and the west and south end of Toronto gets hit hard. Uh, but here where I am now in Markham, which is uh, basically directly north of Toronto itself, uh, we're not getting much of anything. So uh, interesting looking, interesting uh, uh, observations out here. Uh, the more I'm out here, the more I get used to everything, the more I understand. And as I said, things are starting to come together. The, the, the schedule is starting to coalesce. It's starting to come together. And so I can say by uh, mid-September that the schedule will be more or less uh, done. It will be more or less finalized, and I'll be, it will be part of my new routine now. So I'll be fully back to school <laughs> by mid-September. I mean, that's, that's, that's it. It's in school. This is my office. This is the work that I do. Uh, it's basically studying. I got a chair out here. If I get bored waiting for something to happen, because sometimes, uh, like last night, um, nothing happened most of the night. And just around uh, 2.30, I started noticing a shift in the weather. So I, ch uh, I have uh, the satellite information on my phone. So I went on my phone to uh, uh, take a look at what, see what's going on uh, with the GO satellite. Pull down the image, pull down the loop, and what did I see? I saw the Arctic system come, starting to come down. And so I stayed out till 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, and that's what ended up happening. You, started, you saw, saw the Arctic system come in. And then by today, it was fully here. And this is, this is kind of how things work. So for most of the night, there was nothing going on. It was just sort of sitting there playing games on my phone, uh, uh, flipping through Instagram. <laughs> you know, the usual, the usual teenage, the usual school stuff, right? Uh, and that was it. And then th just about 2.30, that's when things started to happen a little bit, and watched it come down, and, and that's what it is. You, you, you're, you're looking at the weather, you're seeing how things feel uh, in comparison to what, you know, because you have the numbers there, but the numbers really don't give you a sense or a feel for what's actually going on. So... That's why it, it is important, even though I have access to the satellites, I have access to the data, it's important to be out here in experience to do the actual observations, rather than to simply lay, let the computer, let the technology tell me what I'm seeing. Uh, anyways, I'm going to leave this here for now. Uh, I'll probably do some more editing on the... Uh, uh, on the uh, on the BTS vlog tonight, I'll we'll get back to some more of my editing tonight. Uh, I have the next series of clips in the uh, editing bay. I just have to sort of label them now, go through and label them, and then from there on out, uh, sort of put them into the editor. So uh, I think I'm going to leave this here for now. I will see you in the uh, next segment, uh, probably, uh, I would say, uh, maybe 2, 3 o'clock in the morning when I go in. All right, take it easy. Well, hello everybody. It is time for another segment of uh, Big Bang Theory's BTS vlog. It is 23 hours and 30 minutes into the day of Thursday, September 1st, uh, 2016. Yeah, we've turned into another month now, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, while things aren't going as planned in terms of getting the editing out for uh, the BTS vlogs and other content, um, the vlogging is still getting done, so it's, it's getting done, it's just taking a while to get out there, that's sometimes how things go, well, at least it's better than, than, than uh, the years prior, where uh, for months at a time, like, I don't get, pro well, months prior, years prior, I should say, years prior to this, uh, back to school took me, uh, I didn't get fully back into a good schedule uh, until, uh, late August, early November. And, but th this is the part of the problem here. You gotta deal with all the different things that are coming in. How to, to deal with all the, uh, the, amount of st the amount of studying that goes on. I mean, being out here till like uh, two o'clock in the morning isn't exactly an easy thing to do necessarily. But, uh, but uh, it's, not, not, it's not necessarily a bad thing either. It really depends on your perspective and how you approach it. Depends on whether it's good or bad and uh, of course, as, as I said before, as long as you have some progress during the day, uh, then you've got progress. And while yeah, I've got some progress, but there are areas where the, that are lagging. So, but the net result is moving forward. This is, this is the progress that I have uh, as a net result. So, 
um, you can't really complain about that. I'm going to switch my hand because, uh, you know, the vlogging arm gets tired after a while. <laughs> the issues with that, that, that vloggers have to deal with. Uh, <laughs> it's on the side there. Um, yeah, so where are we? I'm out here. Uh, I'm watching a, uh, a basically a vortex that uh, has come down from, Ar from the Arctic. It's now starting to interact with a vortex that was initially over uh, North Carolina, or over the Carolinas, has moved south and merged with the systems down uh, in, in over Florida, and has become Hurricane uh, Her Hermione, I think it is. Uh, so, well, there's a hurricane over Florida, and moving northwards up the east coast, and it's actually now beginning to interact with the vortex that's coming down from uh, the Arctic, uh, which is now sort of pushing close to Lake Ontario. Uh, basically came down from Hudson's Bay, the straight line down, and uh, is now sort of moving into Ontario. This is where I'm sitting now. Uh, I'm sitting a little north of Toronto, and I'm seeing uh, the vortex, the result of the vortex, uh, come into the northern part of the city of Toronto. So I'm a little north of the city. Um, so I get to see a good uh, good vantage point here where I get to see the stuff coming from the north and because I'm centrally to, to, central to uh, Toronto I can get the I can see the stuff coming from the east I can see the stuff coming from the west and at, with the building where I am now at the at this point here and this is why I'm here at this point is I can see all directions I can see and sort of track stuff coming from the south, stuff coming out of the southwest, if it's coming from the southeast, if it's coming from the northeast, if it's coming from the northwest. I can see all these different areas there and I can just sort of match it up with the satellite to see okay well what's going on with the satellite, what, what, what's happening with the clouds, what's uh, happening with the system. Am I seeing on the satellite what's going on on the ground and, and more often than not I do see that. There are times when you don't see things uh, that are a little puzzling but I also note that um, that well, although, although you have these cross-continental systems that go all the way from the North Pole down to the equator and from the equator to the North Pole, you do have uh, interlocal systems, particularly right around the Great Lakes. Uh, on the east side of the Great Lakes, uh, on each of the Great Lakes, that there is a sort of a shadow, if you will, of evaporation that moves to the east. And so what happens is there's people talk about lake effect on Buffalo, the lake, the lake effect snow or lake effect rain. Well, it's not coming from Lake Ontario. It's actually coming from Lake Erie. Uh, in, in Toronto here, we're getting a lake effect from Lake Huron. And of course, you have lake effects for Lake Superior and um, Lake Michigan as well. So all the Great Lakes have these, have these sort of uh, lake effects, but they always move to the east. And so that's kind of the situation that we're doing here, and I have a good vantage point, vantage point that I can see this and match it up with what I see on the uh, GOES satellite. The GOES satellite are your satellites that are used by NOAA. These are the National uh, Oceanographic, Oceanographic and Atmospheric uh, Administration. These are the people who put up the satellites, the weather satellites, these sort of Earth observation satellites. These are the people who do that. And of course, I also have access to SOHO. This is the solar observatory in space. They're the people who produce the telescopes for um, uh, for solar observations. Uh, and so you, with this combined, I can sort of see and match up the conditions that are on the sun with the conditions that are here on Earth in terms of the, the uh, we'll call the climatary systems, the, the total movement of the atmosphere. And so that's the way we're doing atmospheric physics. And uh, not necessarily climatology, but atmospheric, atmospheric physics. We're looking at the at the specifics of the physics. And the thing is, this is a climatologist. Climatologists should be doing this, but not doing. It. They're not looking at the physics. They've created their own sort of sense of reality, and call that climatology, although it violates the physics. So, anyways, I'm gonna leave that here for now, and I will see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory all's BTS log. All right, take it easy.
I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.